Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining. Unfortunately, I think you already know from the description of the talk that I'm cheating, and it's not about data science, but it's mostly about data. It's not independent from the data science, right? Because all of the data science uh, requires some kind of data. Because without, without data, you can't do any interesting thing without your, with your GPU, just, I don't know, mining cryptocurrencies or playing some games. So I think the data part is very important. And for me, it's not just important, but I think it's a very exciting part of the technology. And in this talk, I would like to just share with you this uh, excitement or interest. OK, there are two parts. First is the data. And this data is mostly about Apache Hadoop, because I'm Martin Alec, and I'm working in an Apache Hadoop uh, developer. I'm a Hadoop committer. I also have a committer in the Redis project with a PMC member, which is a embeddable Raft protocol implementation, which is a consensus uh, protocol, which is used in a new sub-project in Hadoop, which is Apache Hadoop Ozone. I also have uh, some uh, dirty projects in the GitHub. My current favorite is this one. So if you, are, if you hate the ham chart in Kubernetes, then you may give it a try. OK, so let's talk about first the data, uh, which is uh, Hadoop. Do you know Hadoop? Or do you use Hadoop? OK, a few one. It's not required to, to know for this talk, but this is my view. So maybe it's better to share my, my view, my context. So. Mm -hmm. I have a two minutes full Hadoop course just for you. So this is the way how I usually explain what is Hadoop for my family, because they can't uh, imagine what I'm working on. So Hadoop is a big data uh, system, which can run on community hardware, so cheap hardware, but on a lot of hardware. And usually it's um, uh, do big data calculation. And there are two main problems with the big data, right? Because uh, the big data is the data which doesn't fit on my laptop. And one problem is that I need to split somehow the data between multiple computers. The other one is the calculation problem to, to calculate the, uh, to, to run the calculation on the different nodes and somehow summarize the, the, summarize the results. So, but now I would like to focus on the, on the storage side. Uh, in the Hadoop world, there are actually there are multiple options to use the storage. The right side is the using any cloud provider. Usually, it's not very well known that it's possible, but there are very uh, uh, well developed uh, connectors to use S3, Google Cloud, and obviously we have a storage cluster, which is the Hadoop HDFS project, and both of them uh, have their own problems. With the cloud connector, it could be sometimes easier to use. Sometimes it's cheaper. Sometimes it's, at least in petabyte scale, it could be more expensive. And sometimes it's not uh, consistent, so consistent totally, which may it harder to calculate anything. But in all implementation, the HDFS, which is a storage cluster, it has also some problems. One of the famous ones is that it, it, it's not designed to handle uh, many small files, but also it's very hard to use. It could be used only from the Hadoop world, and if you have a TensorFlow application or any, any other application, it couldn't be used in a very easy way. So, this is the typical way. It's not just about Hadoop, but almost all the storage system, right? This is, this is very easy. If I have a file, usually I just split it to blocks, and the blocks should be replicated, usually in multiple instances between multiple nodes. So that's what we should do. And in speci especially in Hadoop, we have multiple problems with, uh, with the small files, because it was decided that all of the, the mappings are uh, stored in the memory in the master node. And the other problem is that the slave nodes are just reporting the blocks. And if I have, I don't know, 500,000 blocks, then it could be a, a problem. So in the new sub-project, uh, which is Apache Hadoop Boson, we just uh, try to split the responsibility of the 
master node and there are two main parts. One is just I need a mapping from a file to the blocks and after that the blocks should be replicated between the nodes. Okay, and they are separated. We have two master nodes and the good thing between the, the, the good thing uh, about this uh, abstraction that on top of the lower level abstraction where it just uh, replicates the binary data, we can provide additional uh, services such as an object store, Ozone is just an object store, or HDFS or POSIX file system, so it could be used from any, any other system or even any other Apache big data system which requires just something which is replicated. Okay, so this is the, this is the world where I'm, I'm working and, and living and this is not just a separation of, of different uh, part of the, of the existing Hadoop, but we need, a lot of, we need to optimize the current code and use more and more tricks to make it uh, more scalable. And uh, yeah, it's more consistent, more fast, but yeah, that's the object store part. Okay, let's, let's, let's talk about the science, which actually this is just one very particular uh, part of the, of the implementation, but I think it's very interesting and it's a good illustration about that what could be go wrong and what should be implemented very carefully in a, in a storage system. And the science is the title because it's based on two papers. Actually, there are more people follow up papers, that, but they are the most famous one about uh, the copy set and the, the tiered replication paper. And uh, the question is that what could, what could go wrong in this uh, storage system? Well, in, when every, everything is good, then almost all of the storage systems are, are the same. So the real question that how the problems could be handled. And what are the problems? That, that, that's the next question. There are multiple problems, actually. Uh, there are independent failures. This is something like the hard disk failure or SSD failure. This is not so dangerous, according to the paper or according to the uh, researches, because there is very low chance to, to have a failed hard disk, and it's even lower to have two failed hard disks in the same time. So if you just replicate it multiple times, usually even just two replica, replicas uh, are enough to survive an independent uh, hard disk or node failures. There are more tricky ones, the correlated failures, when you have uh, multiple node failures at the same time. And there are two types, the topology related. This is usually when one rack uh, is going down. So if one rack is going down, it usually could be solved just to copy one of the replicas of the data to another rack or another region or with some hierarchy. But there is a third one, the topology independent uh, uh, failures and this is uh, according to the uh, data from the big cloud provider once per year there is a, if there is a power outage and uh, nodes are just restarting there is a, the one percent of the nodes couldn't be started I don't know if you if you, you know, know the feeling if you have a server in the in the data center and your uptime is, I don't know, more than one year, and you need to reboot it. It's also a very interesting time, right? Because it may or may not be uh, re restarted. So that's exactly the same problem. So after, after a while, you have a chance that, and it's independent, that it, it couldn't be started, and it's independent from the, the Rex, and that's the beginning of the problems. Okay, so let's recall that uh, we have files and the files are split into blocks and the blocks should be replica replicated. For the sake of simplicity, I will upload here just small files because in that case it's just uh, one block is enough, but uh, it works in the, exactly the same way with, uh, with huge files, just it's easier to draw to, in the, to the slide. So I have one, file one. I have data nodes, so these are the slave nodes, and I'm just storing the blocks to different data nodes. So I have three replicas here, three replicas here. 
Okay, and my favorite part, I can kill one data node, totally random. So I choose the number totally random at home. So this is the second data node and I'm killing the data node. So no problem here, right? Because I have multiple replicas from, from both of the blocks. So I can kill the second data node, let's say three in this time. Still I survive. I have replicas from both of the files. So just choose another data node randomly, let's say oh, 5, and oh, that's a bad situation because file 2 is uh, no more available. And the big question here is that how can we survive? Um, does it help if I buy a lot of more nodes? And it turns out that it, uh, it doesn't help at all. And to understand that this, uh, I would like to check the situation from the, from the other view. So here, still I have the data nodes, I have blocks, I have files, but if you can see the second uh, file and the fifth file, you can see that both, uh, both of the files are replicated to the data nodes one, three, and four. So let's uh, use this as a base element. This is called in the papers as copy sets. So we have a set of data nodes, which contains multiple blocks actually. So the block of the second file and the block of the fifth file uh, are both in this copy set, the one, three, four data node copy set. So the next math question that, uh, how many copy sets is possible if I have six data nodes? Well, this is a simple math example. This is the, binomial coefficient or something like this. So the, this is how can I choose three data nodes out of uh, six and there are 20 possibilities. And for example, one copy set is the one, three, four data nodes. One copy set is the one, two, three data nodes. One copy set is the two, five, seven data nodes. And let's say I have a lot of blocks or not a lot, a few blocks, but uh, uh, 2000. And because I choose the data nodes randomly, then at the end of the day, I will have roughly 100 blocks at each copy set, right? It doesn't mean that the node one will have just 100 blocks because the node one could be part of multiple copy sets. Is it clear? Okay. Hopefully, more or less. So these are the sets of the nodes and these are the blocks which are on the nodes. And the problem here is that I have all of the different type of copy sets, the all of the combinations, right? And if you choose three data nodes, totally random, then you will choose one copy set, which contains hundreds of blocks. So you can't choose three data nodes without data loss. That's the problem. So that's why it doesn't help if I scale up to, let's say, 600 data nodes. Because with 600 data nodes, with the random replication, I will do the same. I will generate randomly the copy sets, the different type of sets of the data nodes. Now I have 35 million or something like this of the copy sets. But if I have more blocks, then the situation is almost the same. I will have a lot of different kind of sets and all of them will uh, contain, let's say, hundreds of blocks. And in that case, if I kill randomly three data nodes, the, the data loss is guaranteed. So how can we do it better? Let's try in a different way. Still, I, it's easier to draw with six data nodes. So let's, let's try to do just two copy sets. So these are two group, groups of the data nodes. And if you have a file, I will choose randomly one of the groups and I will just save the file to one of the groups. So block one is saved to the first group, to three data nodes. The block two is saved to the second uh, uh, group. So is it better or not? That's, that's the question. Here we have just two copy sets, right? And, but on each copy set we have thousand blocks or roughly thousand blocks if I choose randomly. Okay, 
What will be happen if I kill randomly three data nodes? Well, it's a, it's a very high chance, actually, that it won't cause any data loss, because it will cause a data loss only if I choose one, two, three, or four, five, six data node. And if I'm lucky enough, then it wouldn't be chosen. Okay, maybe. So, so actually this seems to be a more safe option just to do two distinct groups. There is one interesting property of this uh, replication. Uh, the number of the blocks which will be, uh, which will be lost. In the round blob replication, there, there were 100 blocks on, on each copy set. Not, not on the nodes, but in the copy sets. So I would, so there is 100% chance to lose 100 blocks in case of three uh, data node failures in the same time. With the second group, the chance is lower, right? Because I have two copy sets, two to 20. So it's the chance is two to 20. But if I'm not lucky enough, then I will lose a uh, thousand, thousand blocks. So this is something like this. So 10% chance to lose the 500 of 50% of, uh, of the blocks or 100% chance to uh, lose the 10% of the loss. What do you prefer? Two groups. <laughs> yeah, usually the cloud providers prefer the, the two groups because uh, there is a fixed cost of uh, recover uh, of the data because anyway you need to find the right tape and just load the backup. So there is a fixed fixed cost of, uh, so it doesn't matter if, if it's the 10% or the 50% or the because you need to recover anyway. So it's better to recover just once per year even if it's just a little bit more data. Okay, so did we solve the problem? It's Unfortunately, this is, this is not the best one because still there is a problem. In, the, in case of the random recovery, let's say I have just one data node which is down and I need to recover the data node one. So I'm just replacing the hard disk and I'm just copy back all of the data from the replicas. In this case, I can copy these 100 blocks from the two and three. In this case, I can copy the 100 blocks from the two and four, right? So I have a lot of sources and I can copy from, uh, from the sources all together, parallel. But in case of the two groups re recovery, if the data node one is down, I can copy only from the two and three, and actually I need to copy a thousand blocks uh, parallel, but only from two HDD or two nodes. So it's very limited in the, in the IO side. So how, how can we improve it? <coughs> well, there is one, uh, there's multiple options actually, but that's the, that's the uh, target to find somehow the balance between the number of the copy sets and the number of the source data nodes. So this is just nine data nodes and here I would like to create six copy sets for each row and for each column. So it will be six uh, copy sets, right? Here, for example, if data node one would be down, I can copy, copy one of uh, half of the data from data, data node four and data node seven, and the other half from data node two and data node three. So I can use four data node sources to, to recover. And the chance to, the, to uh, lose data is still very low, so it's 7%, which is actually still way more better than the 100%. So in these two purple, there, there are multiple options how can you choose, but Basically, this is the structure that somehow we need uh, to choose different type of uh, combination of the nodes and maybe two sets of the combinations and it could save a, a, a lot of data. Okay, actually this is the, the summary of the uh, two approaches. So this is the totally ran random replication and uh, chance of data node uh, chance of data loss in case of three data node failure is 100% because anyway one copy set will be, will be down. 
and but I can replicate from all of the others, right? For two groups, the chance was very low, but I have I I don't have enough source to replicate in case of one failure. And this, with this six group or this copy set selection, it's I think it's a, a good balance between. Them. Okay, so that was the replication algorithm. Actually, it could be improved a little bit, for example, to calculate also with the rec awareness, but the main ID behind the, the replication is the, is the same. Okay, so that's about, that was about the copy set and um, tier replication. Both of them are just uh, finding the right copy set. There are two main forces, the number of the copy sets, the set of data nodes, and the other one is the number of the source data nodes that recover the data. And we need to try to uh, write balance between them. And yeah, I'm, I'm working in Apache Hadoop Boson, and that's, I think this is, a, this is not the only problem for a storage system, but maybe it's a good illustration why I think that it's an exciting uh, part. Uh, the storage of all of the all of the other systems. Okay, any question? This is a very good question. Why don't you have these six nodes number like seven in the last at the beginning? Pardon? So it's very confusing. You have one slide where you have like six nodes and you have like the the same set one, two same like five seconds. Yeah? And what's the question? Why? You ah. have like only six nodes, like six. This one or? Oh, this one? <laughs> okay. It's just text. Like this one. And it has like six data nodes. And then you have two, five, seven. Two. That's a possible set. Five. Yeah, what's the slide? I don't know which side of the slide you are. Not this one, the other one. I think it's a type where you have a number seven. You have six nodes and the possibility is that two, five, seven. What is it? Okay, from six nodes, the possibility to choose three is 20, I think. Is it? Yes, why do you have two, five, seven? Why do you keep changing this slide? Like right here, right from the second to the point, you have two, five, seven as a possible three node set. Oh, that's oh, oh, that's bad. I agree. <laughs> so you you can read it modulo six, right? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, thanks. <coughs> Any, yeah. It's well, but if you don't, the number of data nodes does not match the replication factor of the DFS. Now let's say the replication factor is four, and you have ten data nodes. Yeah, it's, it's an inter interesting question, and the big difference is between the two papers, that the first paper couldn't, uh, couldn't do it very di in a dynamic way. So there is an algorithm to, to choose the right copy sets, and, but it's very hard to put more data because you couldn't, originally you created a copy set and it's very hard to extend it. But to be honest, if you have 600 nodes, it's not, not a big problem if there is two nodes at the end, which is, but because we have multiple copy sets, uh, practically all of them will be used because there are one node is part of multiple copy sets. But it's possible that one node will have just, I don't know, one copy set and another node is two copies, could be part of two copy sets. <coughs> so okay. it's just a little, could, could cause a little balance problem, but not a real problem, I think. It's not the HDFS, actually a similar but not, uh, not such powerful replication as used by the Facebook on top of HDFS. This is in the ozone, which is some kind of refactoring the HDFS. And yeah, that, that will be the default somehow, maybe in a, in a more advanced way, just to calculate, uh, just to use all of the, I don't know, uh, rec awareness and regional settings and all of them. Yeah? How do you progress with the Is it the production really? The old one? It's a very good question. It's, we have two offer leads. <laughs> so it's not yet. <laughs> or, but it will be very soon, hopefully. But in the time, it will be very production ready. <laughs> okay, then thank you very much. <laughs>